Hey, how's it going? So today I wanted to make a how-to video on when your ISP provides you, let's say, five static IP addresses, how to use those addresses correctly. Um, if you're not well-versed in the realm of networking like I was, but I had to figure it out. I couldn't find any information on this for the life of me online on how to properly do this. So I wanted to make this how-to video so I can basically like remember how to do this in the future. So first of all, why would you want to set up multiple static IP addresses? So I'll move over to the drawings in a little bit, but basically the reason why you would want to have this is you can have multiple networks coming from the same, let's say, fiber internet, right? And the reason you would want to do this is if you have VPN products, because each VPN needs its own WAN address, wide area network address, IP. Or if you just want to have multiple networks, like one for security, one for networks, one for storage, whatever. So you can basically like separate those things while still keeping it under one roof. So in our case, for example, we have multiple VPN products that each need a separate wide area network IP address or public IP address. These are all synonyms as I've come to find out. And um, so let's kind of, I'll just draw it out and Hopefully that makes sense. First things first is when you get a, let's say a fiber product from your ISP, right? Your ISP is your internet service provider. They give you five static IPs. And what this basically looks like is like, let's say you have, I'm just gonna make up an IP, right? So um, 150 dot one, Hundred and one, right? So, basically, what happens is you're gonna get five of these types of addresses only at the end. You get 102, 103, 104, 105, and the first few numbers are all the same, right? So these are all the same, so on and so forth. After they install the fiber internet, basically, it's called. Here, let's do this. Basically what happens is when the ISP guy comes, they install basically, um, you've mo most likely heard of what a modem is. A modem is a little box that connects through coax. This then connects to a router, router, which is just another box. And then from there you get Wi-Fi to your phone, your laptop, um, you get it to your TV, so on and so forth, right? So these are all wireless, wireless connections, right? But the internet really comes from the coax, right? So in the fiber world, as I've come to find out, they instead of installing a modem, they install what's called a. I'm gonna draw this nicely. A fiber rad. This is basically your modem, right? From there. This is how you use your static IP address. Once they have this installed, this is hardwired from, you know, wherever this comes from, the internet provider, your ISP, right? From this thread, you use an ethernet cord, which connects into here. And what you're supposed to do is you plug this into a switch, network switch, right? And a network switch is really just a little device that looks like a little box and it has you know little ports in for your ethernet cables right so this plugs straight into one of your ethernet connections this is a switch and then what you do from here is into each of these with another ethernet cable you plug in all of your different routers you have router one router two, router three, router four, router five. And each router basically like has its own network and password, right? So you have your first box, second box, third box, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Then what you do is let's assume they're all, you know, Netgear or TP links, right? Um, what you want to do, Netgear. What you want to do is you want to go into the settings of each one of these, which it will give you instructions on how to access the settings of your 
uh, routers. And typically what that looks like is you go to, you connect your laptop. You have your laptop like this. You connect your laptop to the Wi-Fi or Ethernet of the router. And then from there, you go to your browser, let's say a Chrome browser, and typically this is what it is. It's typically 192.168.1.1, or it could be the same, only .0.1. If you type this into your URL address bar, it will prompt you to log in to router, okay? Once you log into the router, your, your ISP is gonna give you instructions on <clears throat> uh, certain pieces of information that you need, namely your IPs, your static IPs, right? So your static ones. They're gonna give you your gateway, gateway IP. They're gonna give you DNS1, DNS2. These are all gonna vary based on your ISP, right? And then your, and I believe one of them is also your subnet mask, okay? And these, these, these will all be provided to you, right? But basically what you do then is you go into the settings of your router on the address bar. You put in your static IP one and then subnet mask, uh, gateway, DNS one, DNS two, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna hit the little save button down here and hit save. And then you're basically good to go on router one, right? Then what you do is you go to your router two. This is R2, settings. And you're gonna type in the exact same thing, but remember how we had like 101, 102, 103, right? These are, I forgot what, what I put there, but whatever this number was. We already did this one, now you're gonna do this one, right? You're gonna put everything in, but 102, right? At the end of the day, what will happen is your, your rad, We'll go to your switch and each one of your routers will have its own separate IP or wide area network IP or public IP as I've come to find out these are all synonymous because we can't ever agree on one terminology. So each of these now has a wide area network address where if you just had the one router if you just had one router you only get one WAN address right why is this important for VPNs uh, because VPNs require a static WAN IP it's like you can't have multiple static IPs on one router. That's not how that works. Each static IP is assigned to one router. That's how that works. So yeah, so at the end of the day, that's, that's basically in a nutshell how to set that up. In the beginning, what I was doing, in the beginning what I was doing is, and this is where I went wrong, we had our RAD, I connected router one to the rad and then i was trying to figure out how do i get ip1 ip2 ip3 how do i get those into the router this is not possible so the solution was you have your rad this goes to a switch and then each each router gets plugged into the switch and that way the rad knows to send IP1 here, IP2 here, IP3 here, here, and here. And that's basically how that works. So then with that basically I was able to connect 
five routers to the switch, which then goes to the RAD, which allows us to basically have five VPN services under one roof, when typically you can only do one, but if your, stat if your ISP gives you uh, multiple static IP addresses, you can have as many routers as you have static IP addresses. So hope that helps and that's how it works.